Hi everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Des and I share insights about life abroad and my journey moving here as a medtech in Norway. In this video, I'll cover everything you need to know, job opportunities, salary expectations, work environment, work-life balance, and even the realities of moving here. But just a quick note, everything I will be sharing in this video is based from my experience and I will be comparing it to what I've experienced in the Philippines. So if you're considering this path, let's dive in. Today we'll be talking about a question I've been getting a lot. Are medtechs in demand in Norway? And the answer is yes. The demand for medtechs or bioengineers in Norway has never been higher. According to a business survey in 2024, there are currently 350 open positions for bioengineers, which is a significant increase from the previous years and it's constantly growing. Statistics also projects that that by 2035, Norway will be needing at least 2,400 bioengineers to meet the growing healthcare demand. Another source states that Norway will be needing at least 13,000 by 2040. However, with only 252 study spots available annually, the gap is growing every year. Another reason for this is because 25% of bioengineering students shift to another course and 26% choose to work in another sector after graduating and 23% of those who are already working in healthcare will soon be retiring. This shortage has prompted calls to action from different professional organizations. It's a critical yet exciting time to join this field. One of the best things about moving to Norway as a med tech is the variety of job opportunities available. There are so many industries that need by engineers. Private laboratories offer diagnostic services for healthcare providers and individuals. Individuals. You could also work in food production where medtechs are crucial in ensuring food safety and quality in factories and even beer distilleries. You could also work in animal hospitals, fisheries, oil and gas, prime labs, and research. But it's in the hospital where the highest demand is. Working as a medtech in Norway, healthcare system is built differently here. There's no such thing as a primary, secondary, or tertiary lab because all the different departments have their own distinct location. For example, clinical chemistry has its own area, own distinct place in the hospital. Histopathology has its own and then there's also another different place for immunology and a separate one again for blood bank. So when you start working as a medtech in Norway, you won't be a generalist but you will be working for a specific department. But you don't have to worry thinking maybe your job will be monotonous because there are also different groups within the department. For example, in microbiology, there's different stations within that department because they're highly specialized. So there's for PCR, there's for culture. It's also up to you if you just want to focus on one area or if you want to rotate on all areas. When it comes to career development, it's different here. In Philippines and in other countries, you start working as a generalist and then you can level up your career and become a section head and achieve med tech. But here in Norway, it's be engineer, specialist. Yal B engineer, Fog B engineer, then you can become a NHET ladder and our section ladder. And your license is called authorization here. There's no such thing as CPD units or credits that you need to earn every couple of years to renew your license. It's your responsibility to keep yourself up to date when it comes to working in the field. There's also a system in your workplace they'll ask you to take some courses to keep yourself up to date. Now when it comes to working hours, typically it's from 8 to 4 or 7 to 3 and most jobs are weekdays only. However, some departments Departments like Biochemy require evening and weekends but it's still up to you if you want to work on those shifts and also it depends on the workload and lastly they don't have traditional management styles they have flat hierarchy which foster equality trust and collaboration this means everyone is treated with equal respect regardless of rank and employees are trusted to work independently without micromanagement they also encourage open communication to be direct and transparent on discussions and teams share responsibilities and decisions. You can read more about it in this website. Now the salary expectation. How much do medtechs earn in Norway? 
really depends where you work, either if it's in private or in the public sector. According to utaning.no, if you work in the public sector, the starting salary is 425,000 kroner per year. And you also get additional pay when you work in the evenings and weekends. And it also increases with the more experience you have and if you take master. The average salary is 639,420 kroner. Medtex in US gets paid much higher but they also have more bills while when it comes to Norway you get great social benefits you get free healthcare so you don't need to worry about hefty insurance premiums and it's not a need to have a car because there's good public transport another good thing about working in Norway is after working for two years you are entitled to free education and usually after years of working the workplace offers stipend for you to take masters and one standout benefit is the feria penger system or the vacation pay so throughout the year your employer sets aside a percentage of your salary which is paid out as vacation money the following year this system allows many people to take extended vacations for one month they have really generous vacation leave now when it comes to sick leave if you're unwell your health is respected and your pay is fully covered when it comes to career development as I've mentioned earlier Norway is an incredible place to grow your career as a med tech you can pursue a master's degree with some employers offering stipend after a few years of service and you'll also be eligible to apply apply for student loans while continuing to work you also get the study leave where you can take time off to further your education you can go back to your workplace you don't have to worry about losing it with a higher salary many labs also encourage professional development by sending employees to conferences there's this thing called the Norwegian model where it's used to describe the relationship between employees and employers and between employers and trade unions and between this part and the state so they're really progressive when it comes to creating a healthy work environment if your work time is from 8 to 4 then you end at 4 they don't expect you to work a bit extra and if you do need to work extra because of the workload they will be paying for your overtime pay employers in Norway respect your free time they also can just fire you without any just cause it needs to be well documented and mass layoff is not a thing here and if you do lose your job you can apply for a lot once. when it comes to pension the pension system here in Norway works in three ways so first there's a pension that comes from the state and then there's another one that comes from your employer and the last one is from your own the one that you pay for yourself so there's a really good pension system here when it comes to social welfare health care is free even blood tests are free but you need to pay a small out-of-pocket fee which is a maximum of 3,000 kroner per year so if you've reached 3,000 kroner you can apply for a free card so anything you spend above 3,000 is free of charge there's also no charges for children under 16 and for pregnant and nursing women parents get up to one year paid leave and once you're back at work you can enroll your child to daycare and the price is around 3,000 kroner depending on your workplace they offer discounts you also get child benefit to help cover the cost of having children and will be paid up until the child turns 18 you're eligible for extended rights if you're a single parent plus education is free in public schools in Norway and private schools are not that common the realities of moving to Norway learning another language can be tough especially knowing that you're not just learning it for fun but you're learning it because you need to get a job and get your license I did lose motivation a couple of times because of the pressure but what I did to overcome it is I want to really integrate into the society and I made a timeline for my goals to keep myself on track. I made a mood board of what I wanted my life to look like in Norway to motivate me and I also followed people in social media who are already in Norway to inspire me even more when I'm a bit sidetracked and scrolling on my phone instead of actually learning. The waiting time for the visa can be demotivating as well because back then they said the waiting time was 
was just six months but UDI changed the waiting time to one year so that's the downside you need to check UDI's website from time to time to see if there are any changes in the rules so the best thing you can do while waiting is to be productive start learning Norwegian as early as you can there are a lot of free online resources and affordable options which can help you get a head start I worked as a barista while working as a barista I still continued applying for jobs as a lab tech I got a job within a few months in my field but in those months in between I also got a lot of rejections so that can be discouraging but at the same time I also already expected it based on other people's stories they say the job market can be tough but you just have to continue and think of the bigger picture why you're doing this think of the long run once you get in it will be easier after if you're supporting your family back home it can be challenging because you will be a student once you move in Norway well as if you move in another country you can work as a med tech right away minus the struggle of learning another language so it's really pros and cons and there's no agency that will sponsor you as a med tech so you'll need to handle the entire process on your own this includes managing your authorization visa application and job search independently as well as covering all associated costs additionally there are no direct hire opportunities for med techs that include sponsorship on the bright side this gives you full control over your journey since everything depends on your own effort you can shape your path to moving abroad based on your hard work and determination moving abroad comes with its own set of pros and cons which vary depending on the country you choose there's no single better way it's highly subjective and depends on what you value or prioritize the most for me moving to Norway has been absolutely worth it I love my life here I feel safe enjoy a great work-life balance and live comfortably without the pressure of needing a second job or a side hustle. Of course, I could take on additional work if I wanted to, but it's not a necessity. I also love the nature here. You can easily go on hikes and be surrounded by breathtaking landscapes. Life is so peaceful and I've made friends from different backgrounds, which has enriched my experience. And of course, witnessing the northern lights is such an unforgettable highlight of living in Norway. I hope this video gave you a lot of insight and leave a comment down below if you have any questions and if you have any suggestions for the next video. Bye bye.